That's in Orlando. But there are other games going on, and we had to do our college picks like we've done throughout the year, and it's like a dead, basically a dead heat right now. So here are the picks for this week, and there are some, there's some, wow, there's a lot of differences. I didn't know this. Cincinnati coaching change, Louisville coaching change. In fact, he's going to Cincinnati. Craig and I, or Craig, uh, Paul and I take Cincinnati, Craig takes Louisville. I, uh, One of these I'm not going with. I'm not picking Rice uh, over Southern Miss. Absolutely not. Um, maybe I didn't send that one, but absolutely not. Would yeah. not do that. Yeah. Uh, so that needs to be changed. But outside of that, let's It looks roll. like a pretty good Christmas tree. Well, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not picking Rice to beat yeah. Southern Miss. No. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, no Malik Cunningham in this bowl game, which is why I went with Cincinnati. Uh, the, the coaching spiderweb of this thing in that – I'm sure Scott Satterfield has gone and told them everything they need to know, but I also know that, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, there's too much confusion here. The reason I picked this is because Malik Cunningham's not going to play for Louisville, so I will go with Cincinnati in that one. I was going to say, man, Satterfield left, but so, so did Luke Fickle. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, that's pretty big, too. It's not like, you know, it's just one of them. So, look, it's, it's bowl season. I'm not putting a lot of, like, scientific theory, like if this was a week five matchup in conference play or something between two teams. Like, these these, these are bowl games. There's a lot of variables. Some of them we're going to know. Some of them we're not going to have any idea. Like, for example, today the NCAA just announced that you could have <laughs> – Bowl participation. So, like, how many teams were preparing the last couple of weeks? Like, did they have any idea that this might be coming? If you set it out to where you had a guy who played four games and you didn't think he could play in this bowl game, now he can. Like, how much is that affecting, I in a, in a good way, uh, teams and what they thought bowl season was going to be? But, yeah, I mean, I, uh, the Malik Cunningham thing certainly – dampens my expectations for Louisville here. But, I mean, I just feel like this is a total, you know, throw it up in the yeah. air. I think Cincinnati's got great quarterback no. play by any means. So, I don't feel like that's, you know, a big win in their favor either. So, yeah, I went with the Cardinals. I feel like of the two programs, they're the one that has kind of the more momentum right now off the field. Um, and, you know, both have had to go through a similar situation, unfortunately, with coaching changes. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't. You know, it's one of those toss-ups to me. I didn't want to do bowl games because of exactly what we just discussed because I just think it's so many moving parts. But then that makes it more fun, I guess, or maybe it's a way to uh, talk less about obvious. Him. So I'll take Cincinnati. Jackson State, Dion Prime headed to Colorado, but he's going to coach him out. They're two touchdown favorites against North Carolina Central. We all take Prime across the board. Yeah, I don't think this is any kind of yeah. – they okay. still have those players there. Oklahoma, um, Oregon State, excuse me. And Florida, I take Oregon State. Paul, you took Oregon State. Craig took the Gators. Yeah, uh, the Gators are starting Jack Miller at quarterback who's never played. Uh, so I'm going to go with Oregon State, except for the fact that I do think the Gators probably have a better and more, even though the records may have indicated, I think their Gators roster is probably a little bit more talented than Oregon State's. But uh, Jack Miller starting at quarterback, uh, to me, that's the uh, – and then, of course, if he gets injured at all, then you're into, you know, the wild world of walk-ons there uh, from Gainesville. So that's why I'm taking uh, Craig the Beavers in this You one. want to change your mind before this one, or are you going to still go with the Gators? Um, I'm still going to go with the Gators. Okay. I mean, I feel like they're still the more talented team overall. I feel like they're going to be able to play some defense. And, I, you know, I, I understand the, the quarterback spots, a, you know, a big mystery uh, with Jack Miller now, but I just think this is like one of those things where like talent comes into play and just the bowl setups just being weird. This isn't like, like this is again, like week seven and they were in yep. the same conference and that, like I probably go with Oregon state, but yeah, I'd, I'd go with the Gators here. All right. I, I took uh, the Beavers. I, uh, because of uh, our chat room friend. Oh, Clint. Yeah. yeah. Clint yeah. Moses. All so. right. Now, no, I actually, the, I, I just took the Beavers. I think they're, they're going to win the game. Washington state and Fresno state. I am the only one here. I'm in the minority here at Fresno State after beating Boise. I said Red Hot Boise State a minute ago. If obviously, Craig corrected me. They lost their last game to Fresno State. I like teams like this that are pretty damn good, under the radar in ways against teams that are Power 5. Even though Washington State's had a nice run, I'm taking Fresno State. It's a great quarterback matchup with uh, Cam Ward and Jacob Hayner uh, in, in this game. Um, I, I kind of coin-flipped it on – uh, on which one I thought. I, I think this is, of the games this weekend, this is maybe the one that's least affected by uh, the, the outside college football world of portal and, and coaching changes, although you know Eric Morris is leaving Washington State uh, to come to North Texas. But uh, I, like, I like Cam Ward just a little bit more than, than Jake Hayner, but I, I think it's still going to be a pretty good little quarterback battle. 
Yeah, I completely forgot about the Eric Morris aspect of this. And so there's your moving parts for you and why it's hard to kind of yeah. do this during bowl season. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Fresno State's red hot. I mean, that's the, that's probably the smart pick, um, you know, given uh, their little win streak. They're, they're not little win streak, but their significant win streak rolling in here. Uh, like I said, I didn't think about the, the Eric Morris part of this, but I do like uh, Cam Ward. I think, you know, this quarterback battle will be a lot of fun to watch, and I think this will probably be a game with a lot of scoring and, you know, who the hell knows during bowl season and a couple of talented quarterbacks, what could happen. So, yeah, I mean, again, there's this is not – this is not a lot of, like, we're not betting on these games. Like, some people who are really probably struggling with some of the intangibles and, like, some of the, the you know, things that are that are shifting in, in terms of lineups and coaches and things like that. So, having fun with it. I, I feel like this is going to be a fun shootout game, and I'll, I'll default to the Cougars. I think we're all going to go undefeated. That does seem well, that to be, be technically impossible, impossible but yeah. I think we are. Southern Miss in Mobile in their backyard against... The Rice Owls. Craig has the R next to him, but he's not taking no, Rice no. across the board em- on record. Southern Miss. Emery's already apologized for that. No uh, problem. By the way. So, no problem. Yeah, uh, but I just wanted to make sure, very clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rice is only in this game because of book learning. So that's that's why they're there is because they're academics, which is great, good for them. But uh, these games are not settled in the laboratory; they're settled on the on the field. So, how I dare you go- condescending against Southern Miss and academics? Well, I mean, compared to Rice, I, I, I mean, most yeah. anyone against Rice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so Southern Miss, I just I have them here ready to roll. So, uh, Rice really shouldn't be in a bowl game. Uh, Taylor McCarg, who is a Rice alum, doesn't even like them getting cheered. Uh, I mean, doesn't even like them getting any sort of attention really for this game because I think uh, he is one of many people who feel like change is actually needed. So going to a bowl game is the exact opposite direction of where you're trying to go if you're a supporter Mm -hmm. of the Rice House. So that's kind of the feeling going in. Uh, That gives you any sort of vibes on this one. So, yeah, give me Southern Miss. who had a good year. It's the Lending Tree Bowl for what it's worth. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the uh, I like Southern Miss here. I took Southern Miss uh, too. Now New Mexico Bowl in Albuquerque, SMU, and Brigham Young to our good friend Tanner Mordecai, uh, and Brigham Young, who's without Hall, the quarterback, yeah. and others yeah. that they've kind of had, and they they're kind of in a little bit of a free for all on their roster with Kalani Sataki and the Cougars. I this one was also a tough one to pick, even with Jaron Hall gonna be out because. BYU is probably a little bit better, you know, player for player than SMU is. Um, although I think that that's not too, too much. Uh, but I, I just picked SMU because, again, uh, Tanner Mordecai is going to play and Jaron Hall's not. So, um, you know, they, they already lost a quarterback to the transfer portal to BYU. So, again, things get weird. So these are not like deep, like, X and O football things. It's more, well, <laughs> this guy's quarterback's going to play and the other guy's isn't. So yep, yep. I'll go with that. All right. I don't even know why I picked BYU, to oh. be perfectly honest with you. I have no idea what I was thinking picking BYU, um, especially in light of Jaron Hall. I'll stick with him. It's fine. But um, yeah, I don't, especially against Tanner Mordecai and uh, Rhett Lashley's offense, they're going to probably be, I don't know who all's in or out for SMU, like in terms of, you know, uh, Rice, if like he's playing or not, I would imagine he probably is. But I mean, yeah, they got some dangerous weapons. So this is SMU is the good pick here. But uh, yeah, I just I don't know what I was doing. I because of Hall, and you mentioned that yesterday. That's why I picked SMU. You never know. Again, it's boy. Uh, that game is tomorrow night, seven thirty. Now, Phil Bennett joins us in about forty five minutes, and I mean a tell all on many things about his career, uh, his thoughts about Dave Aranda, and maybe the next defensive coordinator. He did not give a name. But an interesting story about when Aranda was a younger coach. So that's going to be t- today at 5. And they're at home. And this is a tough one now. Boise State, I think, is favored by maybe 8 to 10 against North Texas. North Texas playing basically in their backyard of Denton. Yep. I I just wonder if there's too much going on at North Texas um, the last couple of weeks. Although I'm sure the feeling, like, you know, Phil's going to retire um, after this. I mean, there's going to be certainly a lot of win-one for the Gipper for him. But – uh, I just Boise State's just been better all year. Boise State's fine. Like, I don't yeah. think we need to make out the, like they're some yeah. super great team or yeah. anything. I mean, they went on a run at the end of the year and then they, you know, got beat by Fresno State. I mean, they, they improved and it looked at one point early in the year like you had to start wondering about Andy Avalos and like what was going to go down. And then they obviously make the change, you know, at OC and the change at quarterback. Um, Bachmeyer is a transfer portal. You know, Cutter come, you know, uh, starts to helping on a different level. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, Boise's definitely a team that, that grabbed momentum where there, there really wasn't one early on. I think North Texas being in their backyard, you got win one for the Gipper with Phil Bennett. Eric Morris is now around, and he's got, like, his energy that even this, he's not the head coach for this game, he's around now. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's just one of those. It's uh, I just feel like it's going to be a, a fun bowl game and um, not a ton of thought put into it outside of those things that I just mentioned. So uh, Boise is probably the smart pick here. I'll have better thought out reasonings because I won't be picking these in the morning of day of. Probably I'll put a little more background into it. But I think this should be a fun one for, you know, the storylines on the, the North Texas side of things for sure. So, yeah, I'll go I'll go with the uh, the near hometown team. So we didn't do the Myrtle Beach Bowl, Paul? Uh, no, I guess not. We'll I guess they, that, okay. they couldn't fit it on the graphic. Okay, so. that's fine. Uh, that was Marshall against UConn. Uh, UConn for me. Okay, Marshall. Uh, I'll take. I'll take Marshall. Doesn't count. Yeah. Doesn't count. It's not on the it, graphic. Not on the graphic. Does not count. Again, Craig did not pick Rice, so that one be that would be flipped. But that is a very pretty. That looks like an old school letter jacket for some reason, or something like that. Rapper wears with all the colors and all the different uh, images on the uh, on the graphic. Well done, Levi. It looks what? like something a rapper wears. Like one of those letter jackets they would wear. All right, uh, now, here are 